Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where today I have got a Sheridan replay for you. And you probably guessed from the title of this video that I, I'm putting this game on a bit of a pedestal. Um, I've called this the perfect game. Why do I say that? Well, you'll see. But this game was taken from my recent, my last live stream. So if you watched the live stream, you've already seen this game. You already know what's happening. But if you haven't seen that live stream, then watch along. This is one of the first games I've played in the Sheridan since the ATGM arm distance changes. The Sheridan for me has always been an ATGM tank because while it can fire high explosive, it can fire heat, but the aim time for those two rounds is in Era 2 especially, or Cold War, any it just regardless Cold War in general, long aim times are very difficult to work with. And the Sheridan has a very long aim time on its gun, heat and high explosive. Not to mention that high explosive in Era 2, eh, it, it's okay, it can work. But heat, typically, uh, it's not favoured among players because there is so much spaced armour in Era 2. So, ATGMs were always where this thing was at. But now, the minimum arm distance has come into the game. So what is the Sheridan at now? Well, the Sheridan sits at 100 metres. Sheridan is in the 100 metre bracket. So what that means is, if you're within 100 metres of your target, you cannot hit them with an ATGM, which is why I just fired high explosive. I saw that Brennus at the bottom of the hill, and I don't remember, I didn't remember seeing the number there, but um, I would guess that's probably 70 meters here. Do we, have, do we do I aim back in? Oh no, okay, well, from there, anyway, that was 114 meters, I missed. But I was further around the corner, he was further up the hill. That was probably, I'd say, 70, 80 meters. And the reloads for these rounds are longer than you can, they're longer than you can just easily switch between ammunition types. So you don't really want to waste a reload. You don't want to waste 15 seconds reloading um, the, 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 you know, the correct ammunition type because you realize, oh, actually, no, I am outside of 100 meters. I can just switch to an AG. You, you can't just switch. That's not how these, well, this vehicle works anyway. But that right there is the downside of firing high explosive. Uh, the alpha on the high explosive is 660, but pff, uh, RNG decides, RNG giveth, RNG taketh. Uh, <laughs> it's just how it goes sometimes. So the high explosive rolls can be a little trolly at times. I would like to have killed that Brennus, but hey, it is what it is. Teams. Eight versus nine. This is brilliant. We have just gone past the uh, three. Oh, wait, three minute mark. Am I saying three minutes? I I can't. My brain's gone for figuring out the time. But there we go. That was the. Ex that's an example of what happens when you fire an ATGM within the hundred meters. I was okay. I crested the hill, and then I was inside the hundred meters. The yellow X showed up. Nothing I could do about that. So I've reloaded another ATGM, but this time I'm deliberately taking a much wider line up the hill. I deliberately went further so I could have the range to pull off that shot there. And that's one of the things that I like about these minimum arm distances, is that I've got I've got to think about what I'm doing. I can't just crest a hill, blat someone and run off again. It's like, no, I've got to crest the hill in a particular way. I've got to pay attention to where they are. I've got to pay attention to where they're, in what direction they're moving. If they're moving away from me, that's my advantage, more distance. If they're moving towards me, I've got to think, well, they're coming towards me. I'm not sure I've got 100 meters by the time I crest the hill. Do I push it? I don't think I should push it. I like that. I really like the fact that you've got to think now. I don't take that shot there because I realize I'm a two shot. And if I pull the trigger, I'm spotted and I wouldn't kill him. But I took the shot on the Conqueror because I knew I could kill him. Three versus six. There's no rushing. Pull a handbrake there to uh, deceive the heavy that's coming down the, the eight line. 
that's the reason why I did that. But there's in this game, there's been no rushing, there's been, been no YOLOing, there's been careful, thought out gameplay from both teams. And that's the reason why I'm calling this the perfect game. Because this is exactly what the game is about. Right here. This is what the game is about. It's not about running as a pack. It's not about running together <clears throat> or everybody just, you know, following the massive green on the minimap. It's, it, this game has always been about thought out, careful gameplay and strategy. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using my brain to work out how to best play this. And that's exactly what's been happening a lot in Era 2. And that's the reason why I'm showing you this game, because this to me is the essence of what this game is about. Now I am the last alive on my team. I've got three ATGMs left. I know I can't get close anymore. I couldn't get close anyway, really, because of my hit points. So this, this is where it gets fun. This for me is the essence of this game. It just in general, World War II, Cold War, doesn't matter what it is. This is the essence of this game, right here. The who's gonna outsmart who. There goes the T72 AV. That was a bit of a risk on that ATGM because the AV is notorious for having that reactive armor and, well, bouncing ATGMs. But again, there on the top of the hill, I didn't pick a direction to, to drive in while I was spotted because I didn't want to give the enemy an indication as to which direction I was driving. If you're spotted and you're seen heading off down the G-line, they'll head off down the G-line to try and cut you off. So wait until Sixth Sense has disappeared so that you're no longer on the minimap, and then use that time to make your escape. Three of them were spotted on the minimap there, so I've got a good idea roughly of where they are. I believe this tank up here is a warden, and that's got the bar armor on the side of the hull. So again, ATGM shot, mm, not guaranteed. I've taken one out. It was one versus five. It's now one versus four. But again, I'll say it again, careful. Thought out gameplay, strategy, map positioning, all of this stuff is coming into play here. We're not just rushing around like a headless chicken in the farmyard. No, this is careful, carefully thought out play. Warden is going for the cap, which makes sense because you don't really want to be chasing a light tank around the map. But the mistake he makes is instead of turning for cover, he allows me to reload here and I get a second shot into him. bar armor proving to not be the concern that I initially thought it was I am now out of ATGMs there's one left on the cap well there's one on the cap that means there's two unknowns their team has seen me in E3 they've also seen me in F9 so I've been holding the center line of the map left the, the east and the west flanks so now I'm assuming that they would take o an open route to try and get to those positions. So that's why I go through the town here. But obviously T72 AV is what it is. Um, <laughs> I have to smoke it because there is no way, absolutely no way I can fight an AV. Not with the accuracy of this gun, not with just high explosive. And also not with one of theirs sitting on the cap. So I've got to try and get back to the cap. I'm trying to avoid the houses. I'm trying to get the fastest route back. But their medium, I don't remember what their medium was. I think it's a... Oh, I can't remember what it was. I do spin around here. And we find out what... What is that medium? Oh, I can... Pharaoh's Fury, is it? Pharaoh's Fury? Oh, and Bandit. No, it's a Bandit. There we go. So their BMP2. I remember this. It's a BMP2 on the cap. Popping smoke very early. Uh, helps me get a lot closer. High explosive again, being a bit of a troll. He had 800 hit points. I was never going to get the kill though. Can I get? But it's. I, I mean, I'm. I'm not going to survive. I'm not going to survive this now. Get the kill on the. Get the kill on the BMP2. But the bandit takes us. So it's a defeat. But for me, th this was the perfect game. It was well thought out by both teams. There was strategy throughout the entire game. Everybody played sensibly. Everybody played with their, you know, their heads turned on. 
and the game lasted nine and a half minutes. That was nine and a half minutes of tactical, well-thought-out gameplay. No one was camping, no one was playing passively, everyone was just playing sensibly, and I hold on to the three mark. That is why I love these recent ATGM changes. It's made, these changes have made the game tactical again. And in my opinion, that is the best thing that could have happened to this game. Wargaming, thumbs up. Um, whether or not you knew this would be the outcome, well, if you did, well planned. If you didn't, you got lucky. <laughs> so there you go, guys. That is, in my opinion, a perfect game. Even though it's a defeat, that was a perfect game from a strategy and gameplay point of view. I want more of this. Absolutely fantastic. All right, guys. That's all I've got for this one. If you've enjoyed it, please leave it a like, if not a dislike. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one.